How's it going guys? Thanks for joining me on my small engine repair channel. Today's project is on this um, yard machines made by MTD. Uh, small little push mower, 20 inch push mower. And the problem is, is that the customer is saying that he's having a hard time getting it started at the end of last season. So we're going to take a look at it for him, get it all tuned up and ready to go for 2023. All right, so first thing we're gonna try and do is a function test. I'm gonna to check to make sure there's oil, at least enough to test the machine, and there definitely is some in there. We'll change that out for them. See if we got any fuel. Uh, there's definitely a little bit of fuel left in there, which is not a good sign. I stored it with fuel in the carburetor and the and the fuel tank, which is my number one no-no. Anyways, spark plugs there. I'm just gonna take a quick look at the blade. I'm gonna lift it carburetor side up. The blade looks like it's on properly. The blade, uh, it, Yeah, it looks like it's in okay shape. Uh, the bottom side of this deck's are kind of in rough shape already, though. I'll bet you this machine isn't any more than uh, three or four summers old. Air filter. Just a cheapo foam air filter. That's not in bad shape. So... Give it a couple shots of prime here, and uh, we're gonna see if this thing will fire up. All right, not even a puff. I'm gonna try some uh, I'm gonna try some quick start on this thing so I'm just gonna use some quick start starting fluid uh, ether whatever you want to call it if you have carb spray you can use that as well just something flammable if it runs and dies after using up the ether I know the carburetor needs some service All right, so there you go. Now, um, so definitely a carb probably needs to be serviced. The other thing you can try and do as well is uh, just keep it going with some ether, uh, and then maybe it will kind of suck up some of the gummy fuel and burn that off, uh, and then draw some fresher fuel in. So we're gonna try that. Uh, I'm still gonna clean the carburetor, but uh, I'm just gonna show you what might work for you just in a pinch. All right, so I turn the mower around and I'm gonna just put a, uh, a little tie of some sort uh, to keep the bail handle engaged. I'll spray some more fluid. And then I'll, I'll have that can ready once it does fire up. So it sounded like it was trying to stay started, but it would just die out each and every time. But sometimes that works. You can get away with just doing that. Uh, and you can get your mower up and running real quick. So uh, I think she's uh, ready to go up on the 
stand or on my uh, lawnmower lift now and we'll, we'll get started on this one. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do on this servicing is, is I'm gonna uh, take this fuel tank off. I'm going to empty out the fuel and then I'm gonna let it dry out uh, while I'm doing the rest of my service. Uh, this is last year's fuel. In this case, this one tank has two 10 millimeter nuts. Alright, I'm going to pinch off this fuel line, try not to make too much of a mess, although there's not a whole lot of fuel line to really work with here. I take a set of pliers here, take the clamp off, then I'm going to use my fuel removal tool that I made. Um, so this makes uh, easier work of removing these fuel lines and um, without damaging them if you want I'll put a link down below and up top on how I made one of these all right and this one it's a little harder to get off because the fuel line is so short. There's not a whole lot of flexibility in that. Uh, I'll keep working it off here. Actually, easier way maybe to be, remove this tank. All right, now I got the fuel tank uh, off there. I'm just gonna open it up. I mean, there's, there's really no fuel left in it, honestly. There's just a little bit of fuel slash water residue in there. So what I'm gonna do is just stick a, a rag down in there and, uh, and dry up as much of the rest of that as possible, I'll blow it out with an air gun, and then I'll just leave it to, to air dry after that uh, while I'm servicing the rest of the machine. All right, so next thing we do is uh, work on this carburetor. First thing I wanna do is try and blow off all the crap that's on the outside of this thing um, with my air gun. All right, so it's all air blown off there. So it's not too bad when you're doing that, just make sure you cover up all the holes and you're blowing on the outside of this here. Uh, if it's really bad, you might want to get a little bit of used gas uh, and a toothbrush or a paintbrush or something and kind of get most of the big heavy crap off. This one's actually not in too bad a shape. Um, the next thing I wanna do is, uh, this is something I do as a service uh, garage, is I always, before I crack it open, test the needle and seat to make sure it's not gonna flood, make sure that the needle valve is, is uh, closing off the fuel going into the carburetor, which comes in this inlet right here. So with the carburetor upside down, then the float should be in a position that would close off the needle valve. And if it's doing its job properly, when I pressurize this system up to maybe five PSI, then it should hold that pressure. If the pressure does not hold, then that needle valve is not seating properly and closing off the fuel. So I'll pump it up to like five PSI or so, and then I'll wait, you know, 15 seconds or so before I make my assessment. And it should be holding that pressure, which it is. So I don't have a problem with the needle and seat. So that's good. Uh, another way you could test that, if you, if you wanted to, you could just put your mouth on here and blow. I would obviously recommend cleaning that off as best you can. You could blow in there and if you hear any air 
escaping through that needle valve, then you probably have to replace your needle valve. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is to uh, open up this carburetor. Uh, should be a 10 millimeter bolt here on the bottom for the bowl nut. Now it looks like there's a, a little bit of kind of water slash fuel mix in there. You can kind of see there's bubbles kind of forming there. That's, that's the water in the fuel. I'm sure you stored it outside. We'll see what kind of, if there's any fuel left in there at all. All right, so here you go, guys. This is what your ethanol fuel does to your carburetors on small engines these days. So take a look in here in the float bowl itself. I know it's hard to see with the lighting, but there's not much left in here for fuel. It's all water it's starting to rust the float bowl a little bit. And it, the ethanol in the fuel has attracted that water and it basically it's turned it into a, a bit of a jelly mix at the bottom there. I'll see if I can get you a better shot of that, but you can see that jello right here. Like that's a big gob of ethanol jello mix or ethanol water mix. And I suspect that the main jet, which is down in this hole right here, is clogged up because of that. So I'm gonna keep going with the disassembly here. I'll take off the float pin or float with the float pin here. Take the float and the needle valve off. And like I say, the needle valve does look like it's in pretty good shape there. Just looking for any deformations. Um, from it sitting in the same position for a long period of time. Here's some more hardened jello. All right. Next, uh, I'm going to get a flathead screwdriver that has a straight shank, not a flared out, flared out shank, to be able to fit it down in there. And I'm gonna push down fairly hard or aggressively actually this one is not even tight somebody's probably been in here for before i could turn that right away with so if it is yeah I, i'm turning i'm spinning that down quite a bit and it still hasn't bottomed out yet there, now it's bottomed out. So I don't know what's going on there. Either Buddy's been in here, someone's been in here and put it put it back together incorrectly, or it was never put together correctly in the first place at the factory. And that wouldn't surprise me either. So this doesn't thread all the way out. It's just a, a, a soft brass material. And let's take a look at this main jet and see if we can see through it. So you can very faintly visibly see some light through there. And that's going to be your main culprit there. It's definitely some buildup in there. This is an emulsion tube. It kind of takes your raw fuel and kind of turns it into a mist. And it's got a bunch of little holes as well that could get clogged. And then there's a sort of a main passageway down through the center. That usually doesn't get clogged up. I've only seen it clogged up once before. But you can see right through that main hole. Because it's a bigger hole, so it's going to have a harder time clogging up. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is that just find yourself either a bread tie or a piece of wire from a wire brush and kind of poke out, poke through all of these little holes. Uh, 
It's fine in the one I use here. This is just a little piece of wire from a wire brush uh, on, in, the, in the end of a matchstick. And you're just going to want to poke your poke it through all these little dinky holes individually. Go straight through to the other side there. And once you poke all these through, you're going to need to get yourself some carb spray. If you don't have carb spray and you're trying to do a carb job, it's going to make it much more difficult. Some people use brake cleaner. I recommend carb spray, but if all you have is brake cleaner, then you know, go ahead and do that. So that's all good. And then and then get your, your carb spray. Now just be careful when you're spraying this carb spray. If there's any rubber parts like on the end of your needle, you want to make sure that those don't get exposed to the carb spray because uh, they will swell up. This is kind of like a, a rubberized gasket here, so just be careful. You move those parts out of the way from your workspace and then just spray some carb spray in each one of these little holes. All right, so that's good. Next, we'll address the needle valve itself. So what I'm gonna do is just get a slightly bigger bread tie, slightly bigger diameter. The hole is slightly bigger and try and jam that through there and see if we get any Schmecka. Well, there's definitely some resistance there. All right, but you can see now it's kind of coming through. No problem. And then spray that guy with some carb spray. Just make sure it comes through. Okay, so that's good. All right, next thing to take off is this idle screw. And usually that flathead will kind of fit in that D-shaped opening. And just take that all the way out. Put that off to the side. And then your idle jet is up and underneath here. And again, somebody's been messing with this because this idle jet you can see this here this idle jet sh the back side of it i mean the, the back and front side are flat and then it's rounded on the edges so this back side being flat it should actually be lined up parallel to this little post back here which is also flat hmm. so i'm not sure what kind of lighting there was there so again somebody's been in here messing around this idle jet, it's got a big, big hole in the center that never clogs, but there's a really, really tiny hole in here. And again, you're going to want to use that piece of wire from a wire brush or a piece of electrical wire, something like that, really thin, fine wire, and stick it in the end of this brass jet here. And this one is definitely clogged. I cannot get this. It should be coming through and it's definitely getting jammed up in there. Just so just keep working that. There we go. I can feel it. Oh no, it's just coming in and out of my my uh, matchstick. Yeah, this one's clogged pretty bad. It's about the worst one I've seen in a long while. In fact, it's stuck in there now. So I'll just gently pull on that to get it out. 
Maybe I'll lo try and loosen up whatever's in there with a little bit of carb spray. You can see some of it's coming through the sides there, but not all of it. Ugh. Uh, there we go. I can finally got it through there. Let me see. You can see it now. Now you got to work that back and forth. That should go in and out. Fairly easily. There and now it's 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 going in and out much easier each time. So there's definitely a clog there, and that's going to cause issues for running as well. All right, so one last spray of this jet. It'll be ready to go. You should be able to see it shoot out from the front here. Okay, so that's good. All right, so the disassembly is now complete. The last thing we gotta do is just kind of clean everything off. There's a couple of small passageways or jet jetways down through here as well. And once again, just kind of get yourself that bread tie, kind of stick it down through those jetways make sure that this area right here this hole right here is not not clogged up if it is again stick something in there get all the junk out of there then just kind of spray it all down make sure you spray in this idle jet area okay and then you can spray into those Jet, so you can see it coming through the idle jet there. And just give it a good sort of spraying. You can spray, make sure you spray in the where the fuel comes in. That's your seat right there. Anywhere you see a hole, essentially you want to spray some fluid in there. This is for your primer. All right. And then you're just going to blow this off with some compressed air. And uh, this part will be ready to assemble, reassemble. And then for this bowl, the best you can do is... You know, spray some carb spray in here. And then get yourself like a little wire brush or something like that. Or a piece of sandpaper or steel wool. If you're going to use steel wool, which is probably what I'm going to use. Just make sure you don't do it right where the carburetor is that you just cleaned. Because there's little fibers coming off of this thing. So I'll do this over the garbage can and we'll see how good we can get it. All right, so everything has uh, been cleaned up. I will probably wipe off this. I'll wipe off this. Uh, oh, the needle valve came off. That's okay. I'll show you how that goes back on in case it happens to you. Just clean off this float. And I like to put the car back together with without the use of a glove because the glove is probably all grungy now anyways so I don't want to get any of that grunginess onto my parts my nice clean parts so 
So this is pretty simple on how it goes on guys. So this being the top of your float, this being the bottom of your float, there's like a little pin or a little, you can see like a little bracket thing there. It goes on that, that metal tab, just like so, and that's it. All right, it can fall off again. So you, you kind of keep it on an angle like that so it doesn't fall off the fall off the pin this way. All right, so put this back together just in the reverse order of what we take it apart from, All right? So we'll just put our, our uh, idle jet back in, make sure it's parallel as best we can with the base of the carb. You stick your idle jet or your idle set screw in. Just make sure your tools are kind of cleaned off. And then with this one, guys, it, it doesn't have to be super precise because these things don't idle. So it just, the center of the head of that idle set screw has to be lined up with the center of that jet underneath it. It's just primarily there to serve as a, to prevent the idle jet from coming out. And it also sets your idle speed, which is irrelevant on a push mower. Unless you have a uh, push mower that has a throttle control. Uh, you can go ahead and put in your nice clean um, emulsion tube. It goes in this way because this part sticks out into the throat of the carburetor. Okay. Then your main jet can only go one way. Now, I still don't like how small this opening is in this, in this idle jet. I, it should be a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to take one of these torch tip cleaners and find the one. It's usually around the fourth one, something like that. Find the one that fits through snugly. All right, so that one doesn't quite fit through. So I'm gonna go down one. I'm gonna try that guy. Now these things have a little bit of a, you know, abrasive edge on it. So you can, you're not trying to really hollow out the whole to make it any bigger per se, but you want it to be nice and, and, and clean. And now look at the difference. It's definitely much bigger opening there just cause it's nice and clean. So I'll spray that out one last time with some carb spray. And then I'll go ahead and reinstall that. And again, this is brass, it's a soft metal. So don't over tighten it and strip the top of the head because you'll never get it out again. Just bring it down to the bottom with light pressure. When you get to the bottom, push down and turn just a little bit just to snug it up, okay? Next thing will be the float and the needle valve. Before I do that, I usually like to put a couple drops of this really thin three-in-one oil where the seat is. And that area is always wet anyways with gasoline. So putting a little bit of oil in there is kind of good for that little rubber tip. And it'll be good for when I test it as well because it'll be wet, which is what, 
way it would be normally. So now you just kind of line up the two holes on these posts with the hole in the in your uh, float. All right, that's good. And I'm going to go ahead and test it one more time before I put it back on the machine. I don't need the float bowl on. I just need the float to be upside down, which is putting the most amount of pressure on that that needle underneath it against the seat, which should be blocking off the air that I'm going to pump in, which would be the equivalent of having fuel in there. So I pump it up again to about five, wait maybe 10, 15 seconds. And uh, if it was leaking, it's very noticeable. You'd see it or hear it even sometimes with that fluid, that little bit of thin oil I put in there. If it's, if it's not seating properly, you'll hear that fluid kind of gurgling because that's letting air in past. So it's another good reason why you want to put a little a couple dabs of oil in there. So then the float bowl can go on any different way here, but there is a drain plug which usually you're going to put on the opposite side of the fuel inlet because that's usually where it's going to be most accessible and uh, once it's on the machine. And then you just put your 10 mil bolt back on and it's ready to go back on the machine. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to do is, is take this, uh, at least the starter recoil off. And those should be probably 10 millimeters as well. And here's one of the things that's a problem with these kind of uh, starter recoils is, is that the posts that they these nuts go on to, they sometimes start spinning out. This post will look just like this. So instead of the nut coming off the end, this whole post is trying to come out. So what I found before is if I try and tighten the whole thing down first, and sometimes... The, just the nut will come off. There we go. So another little tip for you there. Now if the whole thing comes out, then it's not that big of a deal. You can just take it off afterwards, separate the nut from the post, put the post back in, and then put your cover back on and put the nut back on. All right. So that'll remove the starter recoil so I can service that. So to service the starter recoil, what I'm gonna do is just get some lubricant. And uh, there's two areas of this starter recoil I want to lubricate. One is these poles here. They've got like spring, spring in that area. Just want to keep that kind of lubricated and then I also want to lube up the spring which is underneath the assembly here. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that maybe with the light there but you see that little bent piece of metal right there in the center of the screen. That bent piece of metal is actually the spring that's on the inside and it attaches to this piece right through there. So what you can do is kind of stick your your hose of your lubrication bottle. Try and get that in where that spring goes somehow. Just even just like that maybe. And, and spray some lubricant in there. And then what you're going to do is just kind of work that back and forth. So I like to pull it kind of all the way out. So that that I work the whole spring as I'm slowly letting the rope go back in. All right, and that's gonna help prevent that spring from rusting and then breaking on you in the future. So now we can take off this top shroud, engine shroud, and get a look underneath here. So under the hood here, what we've got is a uh, flywheel. Uh, so we're just checking the condition of the fins. We've got an ignition coil. We're kind of checking 
the gap between the ignition coil there should be a gap between the ignition coil and the flywheel and i'm not going to spin this because the spark plug is still engaged so i can disengage the spark plug and there should not be any rubbing between those two parts you can see there's definitely a gap all the way around that gap is about the width of a business card so if this gap is not right or you want to reset the gap you can just loosen these two items put a business card in between there and where the magnet is on the flywheel there should be a magnet oh there there's your magnet all right so once this magnet goes past this coil it generates electricity sends it to the spark plug so every time it goes around it generates spark 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 right so that's how that system works um we're gonna obviously take off the spark plug this has got one of these torch spark plugs which uh, i think are garbage uh i probably will end up replacing that and uh the la yeah that's pretty much all we're gonna do so i'm just gonna blow all this off gonna keep my hand over the intake i don't want any of that stuff going into the engine so i'll blow all this off try and get it somewhat presentable all right so it's all kind of cleaned up here now uh the next thing i'm going to do probably is take out this torch plug and Normally I do service these. Uh, I mean, the spark plug in your car lasts you for what, 100,000 miles these days. These are probably slightly cheaper spark plugs, but still they should last you more than one season. I mean, they do recommend changing them out every season, but I try to service them. Uh, you take a look at the spark plug and kind of get a good indication how the engine's running. It should have kind of a mocha uh, mocha color to the, the electrode, and that's this one has. Uh, it shouldn't have too much carbon buildup, which uh, is, is the case on this one. So uh, you can either replace this uh, or if it's still working. Uh, I mean, it was definitely working. So maybe uh, I'll try and keep the cost down for this customer uh, since there's nothing wrong with it. I'll just clean it up, make sure it re I re-gap it with a spark plug gapping tool, 30 thousandths of an inch, and then I'll reinstall that. All right, so I got some fresh fuel in there. Now I'm just gonna check for any leaks. On the carburetor side, it's been a few minutes and I don't see any leaks. Give it a couple shots of primer. I can definitely hear the primer working. I can hear it gurgling. Let's we'll see how we did. All right, so now it's been uh, ran for three or four minutes ran like a champ probably as good as it did the day it was new now we're gonna change out the warm oil actually the oil doesn't look too too bad but start nice and fresh i just have one of these fluid extractors kind of love love these things Definitely makes life a little easy, much easier. Suck out all the fluid, nice warm fluid. Yeah, and this, this oil is not that bad, but you can tell by the color coming through the tube. And there you go. What was that, 30 seconds? Drained out all the oil out of this thing. Uh, you never get every drop of oil out of one of these things, so get as much as I can out. All right, and then uh, here you go. It says 10W30, so I'm gonna try and put about start out with about 
400 milliliters, 0.4 of a liter. I think that's, according to this, about, uh, that's about 12 ounces. Probably it's gonna take a little more than that, but you don't wanna overfill it. And of course, it's not gonna like it going in there, so. Double funnel system, 400 mils, and I'll just give it a quick check. All right, and there we have it. So the 400 works just fine and I can see the oil right there kind of at the base of the threads of the engine so that's good that's why I start with 400 and not 500 because some take four some take six better off to start less than more all right now I'm gonna flip this up and do the blade on this thing. So anytime you're working on the underside of these things, guys, make sure you disconnect the spark plug wire so that if you happen to spin the engine over a little bit, that it's not gonna start on you. Just gonna pump this up a little bit so it stays upright. So looking up and underneath the deck here, this is uh, this one happens to be a 5.8. Some of them are 9.16. Take that guy off. Let's take a better look at the blade. This blade adapter looks like it's not seized onto the shaft yet because these things rust onto the shaft. So, but there was a little bit of junk wrapped around that blade adapter so clean all that off get the blade adapter put back on I'll take a closer look at this blade so the blades got definitely some nicks in it dings all right so a couple of rocks and stuff have been hit. It's, it's not too bad though. When you can, uh, when the when the tip of the blade is sort of rounded off here, or the backside is really is really um, like rounded off or or missing or very thin, that's when you know you got to change the blade. But this one's got lots of meat, lots of life left in it. I'll just sharpen this one up and put it back on. All right, so the easiest and fastest way I've found to sharpen these blades, guys, is just use an angle grinder with a flat disc. Uh, if you don't have one of those, I mean, you can just use a file and kind of smooth out. You just want to keep on that same profile, that same angle as you're filing it. And it doesn't have to be razor sharp. Uh, in fact, when they come from the factory, they're slightly dull because if they're razor sharp, then that means the tips are very thin and they get affected by even twigs and, you know, little tree, tree twigs and branches and stuff like that, that you're cutting up in the grass. So you just want to uh, get it, you know, smoothened out and, uh, and on that same profile. I, I try not to take too much material off because uh, I, I want this blade to last for a couple more sharpenings for sure. So I might not get every one of those little of, of those heavier nicks out, um, but for the most part, it's 
all the nicks are out. Now I did 10 passes on this back and forth. So I'm going to try and do 10 passes on this side to see if it uh, keeps it fairly close to being uh, balanced. This side is definitely more apparent that it had more nicks. You can see there's a big chunk there. If I wanted to, I could continue, you know, grinding this down, but then I'm taking more material off the, and it, and it really is not gonna affect it that much, to be honest with you. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Now we just have to balance it. So I have a, a just a balancing tool that I made uh, these are a bunch of uh, bearings. They come in a kit just like the way it is here. I just mounted it to a little piece of wood. And what you do there is then just put that on the piece of wood and see if it is nice and level. You can see this one's not level, which means this side is actually heavier than this side. So what I'm going to have to do is actually take more material off of this side. So I'll keep sharpening this side until that thing maintains nice and level. All right, so there you have it. She's nice and level now. If I adjust it, put it back, it stays nice and level. So that means that thing is nice and perfectly balanced. So it's ready to go back on the machine. So before I put it back on the machine, though, what I'm going to do is just kind of scrape all the grass cakes off the bottom here. This grass is sticking to the bottom is what's rusting out your, your deck. I and mean, it's only making your deck last a couple of years. So this is something you kind of want to do on a yearly basis, if not multiple times a year. All right, so it doesn't have to be perfect, guys. Just, you know, look at all the crap that was sticking to the bottom of this deck that's rusting away. You know, that's all rusting away your deck. So you can see it's pretty crunchy already under there. So anyways, now the blade's ready to go back on. The important thing about the blade, guys, is make sure that it goes on the correct way. Okay, these ones especially. People like to put them on like this, right? Think they go on like that. They actually do not. They go on this way. So your sharpened edge faces up, which sends the cut grass up and into the top side of the deck, which then hits the top of the deck, comes back down, potentially gets cut again. And that's kind of where your mulching action comes from. Now these things don't have to go on super tight. I think they're about 40 or 50 foot pounds. So just your basic, you know, uh, impact gun will work just fine. If you don't have one, just hold the blade and, you know, use a, a socket. Just careful, you know, if it slips, you don't want that. Your knuckles getting rubbed up against that blade. Okay, so that's perfectly fine. And now all this thing needs is a, is a cleaning, a good cleaning and uh, it'll be ready to go back to the customer. After the cleaning here, I'll just get, get, show you a side-by-side -side, kind of before and after, and uh, you'll see what kind of quality comes out of uh, my garage. So so, anyways, guys, hopefully this was uh, informative. Um, I know a lot of you are pulling out your mowers now after a long winter. So uh, if they don't start uh, and uh, they're in need of a servicing, you can just follow along with all the steps in this video. A lot of these things are applicable to all mowers, might be slightly different style or whatever, but uh, the, the, the basics are the basics for every mower, guys. So uh, hopefully it'll help you guys out, maybe save you a repair bill of taking it to a guy like myself when you can do this on your own and get the sense of satisfaction and, and gratification of uh, working on your own machine and uh, learning a few things and saving a few bucks in the meantime. So 
Anyways, uh, smash the like button down below. If you're not a subscriber, consider doing so. I post videos just like this uh, just about once a week. And uh, uh, thanks for uh, those who have been subscribers and watch my videos on a regular basis. Appreciate all the support. Until our next project, guys, take care.